launched in December 2011. The HD7970 was the first AMD GPU to adopt their new GCN architecture. When it launched it competed against the GTX 580 and 590 from Nvidia, also replacing their now aging TerraScale HD6970. It was the fastest single GPU until Nvidia released their Kepler GTX 680 in March 2012. Only a few months later, AMD in return launched an even faster version of the 7970, the Gigahertz edition, boasting even faster core memory clocks. Hello everyone, this is Guido here, and today we'll be having a look at an even faster version of the Gigahertz edition, the ASUS HD 7970 Matrix Platinum. In terms of specifications, where the 7970 had a 925MHz core clock, the Gigahertz edition boosted that to 1050MHz, but out of the box this Platinum runs at 1100. The 3 gigabyte of GDDR5 sees a similar uplift, from 1375 MHz to 1500MHz on the Gigahertz edition, and now 1650MHz on this Platinum. As you can see on the spec list, the Platinum is based on the 7970 GHz, and is very OC oriented, with a very beefy cooler and VRM setup. Opening up the front, it shows some more features, like the RGB status indicator, voltage control buttons on the card, and ASUS's GPU tweak software. Starting with the accessories box, there's a couple of interesting things in here. Starting with a regular DVI to VJ adapter, and more interestingly we have a DVI to HDMI adapter, as this card doesn't come with any uh, HDMI ports. Got a crossfire cable. Here are cables for VGA hotwire. And next, what I thought was quite impressive is they've actually included a special LN2 MOS heatsink designed for MOS cooling during LN2 overclocking. So they're really expecting some high overclocking capabilities from this card and people actually um, putting it under LN2. So that's neat to see. And we of course have driver CD and just your regular uh, setup. Time to get out of the box. I must say that it is very well packed. We've got huge amounts of foam around it, so very slim chance you actually damage this card during shipping. Overall the card is huge. It's three slots wide, we've got dual 8-pin power connectors. On the back we've got a nice metal backplate with ASUS Matrix on it. Overall the card is very well built and very heavy. We've got a huge cooler with dual fans, thick copper heat pipes in the cooler itself. During operation the card always stays very cool and quiet. I was very impressed with it. On the back of the card there is also uh, physical points for voltage readout and for the VGA hotwire. And we also have buttons for voltage control and for turning the fans to 100%. Now it's been said that the 7970 has aged very well, perhaps more so than the rival Kepler generation. And because I have the performance numbers of the big Kepler GTX Titan I tested a while back, I was keen to find out how the 7970 would do against it. Starting with the classic GTA 5, running on the Rage engine. Here things aren't great for the 7970, with only a 75 FPS average, which is lagging 22% behind the Titan, and even getting beaten by the old dual Fermi GTX 570s, although Tahiti's frame times were much better here. Swiftly moving on to DICE's Battlefield 1, running on the Frostbite 3 engine. It's been known that Frostbite really likes AMD GPUs, and it shows here 68 FPS average and 54 on the 1% low, meaning it's basically tied with the Kepler Titan, and easily passing 3 Fermis. Next is the famous Crysis 3 running on CryEngine 3. Here the 7970 Platinum performs much like it did in GTA 5, 
although it does now beat the Fermi Duo with a 54 FPS average. Compared to the Titan it is also 22% behind here, but in terms of 1% low only 10% behind. Changing gears to Dirt Rally on the Ego engine. Performance is better here for the 7970 with an 89 FPS average, meaning it's tied with the Fermi 570 Trio, although compared to the Titan it is 16% behind still. Next up is 2018's Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the Foundation engine. Here the 7970 shows some truly amazing performance, being right up the heels of the Kevlar Titan with a 42 FPS average. The Titan does slightly better on the 1% low, though there isn't much in it. And lastly, the latest game here is DICE's Battlefield 5, also on the Frostbite 3 engine. Although it's difficult to get an accurate numbers in multiplayer, I do think these numbers are representative, and just like in Battlefield 1 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 7970 is right up behind the Kevlar Titan, with a 56 FPS average. Again, some really great numbers here. With all the OC oriented features and the massive cooler, you would expect a card like this to have fantastic overclocking capabilities. And while that could be true under sub zero conditions, in this case with just air cooling, that is sadly not the case. Using 1.3 volt for the core, I could only get it up to 1230 MHz. Although the VRAM was a bit better, with a boost from 1600 MHz to 1750 MHz overclocked. Nevertheless, with these clocks I managed to get this car to scream ahead in Battlefield 1, overtaking the Titan with a 75 FPS average, gaining about 10% over stock, also showing very impressive 1% lows. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider it saw some smaller gains, but it still managed to pass the Titan, with a 45 FPS average. Well, those are certainly some interesting numbers. I would like to add a few things before I end this video off. Firstly, I did test the 7970 on Windows 10 with the latest AMD drivers, whereas I tested the Titan a while back, a few months back actually, on Windows 7, with slightly older NVIDIA drivers, so there could be still some differences in that, but I don't think they would have made up for the huge numbers we saw in you know, the two Battlefield titles and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Speaking of those differences, those are some big numbers. We saw around 20% difference in the older titles like GTA V, Crisis 3, whereas they were basically tied in uh, Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That is quite some performance improvement there. Well, there's a lot of debate going on as to why that is. On one hand you could say, well, the 1770 was the first car to have the GCN architecture and AMD kept using that architecture for a long time. And also in the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles. So it's very well possible that because they have had to optimize those consoles for newer games. The 7970 has benefited from those optimizations um, made because of the consoles, so that is certainly possible. On the other hand, it could also very well be possible that um, Nvidia really hasn't been supporting the Titan or the Kepler generation as much, and therefore um, in the newer titles it just doesn't come to fruition as much as it did in the older games like, say, Crisis 3. In any case, um, more testing should definitely be done on this in order to for sure say that, well, the 17 and 70 has caught up, we can say that, well, in these three games it has caught up, but that doesn't say that much. But I think it was interesting to see what it did. In any case, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you want to be kept up to date on future videos, why not subscribe and thank you for watching.